Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Heal Live. We're so happy that you're here to join us and I'm glad to be back after taking a week off. My name is Monica. Good morning, I'm Kate. And our buddy Fred is missing. He's home with AJ. He couldn't find a sitter for his grandson. So he's praying with us from his home and he's here in spirit for sure. But we are most thankful that you're all here to pray with us. Last week I was on retreat with the staff and I thank you all for prayers. I could feel that everyone was praying for us and we truly had a very, very blessed, peaceful time. Lots of incredible reflection and prayer and really gave me a new outlook on the way I pray. So hopefully Let's Heal be a little richer than it was before. Um, we hope you're all doing well. We're going to begin with a prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you, we praise you, we bless you, we love you so much, and we thank you for your infinite love and mercy. Just pour out your Holy Spirit on us, pour it out on our world. Be with us in this next little segment of time that we're taking to pause from all the worries and all the world that's around us, and we just want to focus on you and open our hearts so that you may speak directly to each one of us. We trust you, we know you're here in this process. We thank you for the peace that you give, for the love that you give. We pray for all those who are ill. We pray for all those who are really suffering. There are so many who are suffering right now with this new variant of the COVID virus. And we just pray for healing on our world help us to be safe and smart give us wisdom give us courage and give us everything that we need to endure we do all these things in your name there's your son jesus christ amen, amen. all right so um we will be focusing on the gospel from this past sunday the gospel of john and i hope you all uh we're able to get a share of Father Jerry's homily, which was really rich. Yeah. And he's invited us all to really just focus on that gospel of John chapter 6. And um, I hope that everyone's doing that. It's just really rich and it's so unique and um, has a lot to speak to us, I think. So Kate's going to read the whole of the gospel from this past Sunday right now. Okay. This is from John chapter 6, verses 24 through 35. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you. You are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, what sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you. It was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Amen. Beautiful. So beautiful. You did a great job proclaiming that one. It's very nice. So from that, I was given this interesting story. And it's what we call the modern day parable. And I will share that story with you now. The title is actually Telling Stories. 
When the crowd saw that neither Shanice nor her entourage were there, they themselves got into their cars and came to Chicago looking for her. It's a big and busy city, one where Shanice thought that she could get lost in the crowd for a bit, blending in with the sounds and the sights and the distractions. But too many people recognized her, and when they found her across the parking lot, they said to her, when did you get here? This wasn't a stop on your tour schedule. Shanice answered them and said, hello, hello. I say to you, you aren't looking for me because you want to hear me sing, but because you sell your pictures of me and you feed the people's curiosity with stories. But that kind of ravenous hunger for gossip can never truly be filled. Do you see that you work for the story that is shallow sensationalism? Wouldn't you rather work for the stories of truth that last a lifetime? I'm happy to give those to you. Stories about the real person of me and what inspires me. That is the kind of story which endures. Would you like a meaningful story for your byline? One for your editor to proudly set his seal upon? Shanice looked at the sea of faces, holding their cameras at the ready. Only the shutters were stilled and the lenses were slightly askew. Perhaps they had actually heard and understood what she was trying to convey. Perhaps they were considering her proposal. Perhaps they were merely stunned. An unusual moment of silence filled the space. Shanice's personal assistant, Annie, nudged her and whispered, These people make you famous. It's good for us that they follow you and report on what you're doing. Give them something to spark their interest. Give them what they want. I'm afraid you're losing them. Shanice saw the faces of the reporters seemingly for the first time. She had never really looked at them closely. She was unusually preoccupied in what they looked like, and what she was usually preoccupied in what she looked like. Now she could see weariness and worry in the lines on darkened foreheads from hours outdoor on the chase for celebrities. She saw eager beginners in it for the thrill. She saw aged veterans working to put food on the table. She saw that they were all in it for themselves. Funny how she had naively believed that they were here for their love of her. Normally, she would put on a grand smile and make sure that they catch her good side. She knew how to work these moments. Just last month, she was featured all over social media when they caught her at a farmer's market. She removed her disguise of sun hat and sunglasses and held up her basket of fresh fruits and vegetables. She had that, you caught me, look of surprise on her face and announced, I'm turning over a new leaf, literally. Shanice played the game well. I have decided to be kinder to my body, she declared as she set free her long locks that had been pinned up. Of course, the whole thing had been set up as a strategy to market her new line of diet supplements. The publicity would lead the world to, would lead the world to associate her line of products with fresh whole foods. The whole event worked just as Annie had planned and projected it would, all to the good of their brand success. Shanice had been thinking lately was the purpose to make money or to make a difference? She entered the business because she loves music. God had gifted her with this special talent. She was first discovered at the age of 12, filling the cathedral with beautiful songs of praise. Her voice was unique and filled with the spirit. It reached your heart before your ears. Her singing invited you to his presence. But the quick rise to fame had shifted the focus from music that means something to music that reaches the top of the charts and brings in big revenue. She wasn't exactly sure how her music career turned into clothing lines, home decor, and now food products. Where was the meaning? Where were the songs that take your breath away and make you forget where you are for a few minutes? She no longer felt the spirit moving her music. Shanice looked down at Annie, whose big brown eyes were pleading for a catchy quote. Silence was deadly in this business. So one of the reporters said to Shanice, what can we do to publish the great, work, great works of your life? Shanice answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe I'm a person who has a true story. So they said to her, what story can you tell us that we may see and believe you? What can you say? Most of our stories quote you selling and pushing your products. It seems nothing has been written about anything lasting in your life. So Shanice said to them, Right, right, that is what I'm saying to you. It's not the story for parking lot paparazzi. 
My story gives the truth about me and my quest for heaven, not stardom. Many turned and walked away, irritated at this waste of time and already on the trail of the next celebrity sighting. Annie's face was a mangled mix of confusion and rising fury. This is going to hurt you, she murmured sternly. One reporter packed away his camera and said to Shanice, I want to buy your story. She replied, I'm a person, not a commodity. Whoever wants to come to me and listen to me will not be hungry for gossip, and whoever believes me will never thirst for profits. The man stepped closer and said, Then I'm your guy. I'm truly interested. Annie extended her arm to block his approach. He is not the one to tell your story, she expertly stated. His byline will not benefit us. A wave of truth washed over Shanice. Annie wasn't here to assist. She was here to drive. She had taken the lead a long time ago and was steering them in a different direction than the path to which Shanice felt called. They had gotten so swept up in the process of reaching for the star stars, they were blind to what grounded them. The truth is that Annie speaks of love and friendship. So many people in Shanice's life do. But those are mostly empty words, bubbles of strategy disguised as endearments. The core of the business was about them advancing under the spotlight of Shanice, resulting in leaving the, e leaving the even brighter soul of Shanice in the shadows. Wow. The end. Good. Thank you. It was long. Sorry. It was very, <laughs> very lengthy. But it was just a story that I felt. So yeah. anyway. All right. Let's focus back. We don't want to get caught up in the stardom, right? So we will begin the four step, four step process of Let's Go. Letzio Divina is divine reading. It is an encounter with God. The key elements are to allow the Lord to lead this prayer time. Be open to hearing God speak through his living word. Surrender to his message for you at this moment. Accept the challenge to wrestle with and grow into the word that God gives you. Allow his word to nourish and transform you. Reading the sacred word is listening to the voice of God. Listen deeply with your heart. Be present in each movement. Take time to savor the process. Be attentive to your breathing. Let go of distractions and open yourself to this encounter with God. Our first movement is Letzio, which means reading. We will read the scripture passage slowly. Listen for a word or a small phrase that beckons, unnerves, disturbs, shimmers. Gently focus on that word in silence. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal.
Our second movement is meditatio, which means reflecting. We will read the same scripture passage again. Focus on the word or phrase that shimmers and accept any images, feelings, and memories that stir in your heart. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal.
Our third movement is oratio, which means responding. We will read the same scripture passage again. Listen for what connects with your life. Record the prayer, awareness, or call to action that arises from your reflection. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. Okay, this is the part where we share the one word or phrase that's been given to us. What did you get, Kate? Um, I was given the word endures. Endures. Mm -hmm. I was given on him. So I invite you all to follow Fred's lead and share your word or phrase that was given to you, and we will go into our fourth movement and then come back to discuss. Thank you. Our fourth movement is contemplatio, which means resting. We will read the same scripture passage once more. 
slow your thoughts, and rest in the presence of the Holy Spirit. We offer gratitude for His presence in this time of prayer, stillness, and communion with Him and with one another. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. As we conclude this prayer time, gently connect with your breathing, and become aware of your surroundings once again. Take a deep breath in and release it. All right. So this fourth movement is my favorite part. It's just so important and I hope everybody, you know, tries to work that into the day like I make sure I do at least that every day. I just think it's such an important uh, step toward knowing his peace. And so sometimes I do it several times a day because I, I can feel myself, you know, getting flustered or worried or just overwhelmed with things and just stepping aside for a few minutes to close my eyes and not think and just be open to him. It's just a difference maker. It really is. So, all right. So I think this was a rich one. I hope you did too. What yes. tell us about your wisdom, Kate? Um, I was given the word endures, which to me means lasts a long time or forever. And I just related that to the love and the care that Jesus has for us. And of course we all walk different paths, but most of us have times in our lives that we sometimes feel that 
that God and Jesus is distant from us, but despite that, we know that he's, he's walking there with us. His love endures through everything, through the, the good, the bad, the sickness, the death. His love is there with us. And I've really felt that, especially in these past few weeks. So, Amen. That is beautiful. That, that brings me peace. That gives me great comfort. Um, so mine was fairly similar. So I was really surprised by the on him. Well, let me back up, like just trying to find which phrase to put because there's so much in this gospel. So if you saw my book where I highlight, you know, usually it's very clear. This is our phrase that we're going to focus on. I had four for this one. <laughs> and so I just have been praying and praying. And this morning as I was preparing, I just prayed. And this one was the one that came. And it was just a different piece of the, the gospel. but And so the phrase on him came to me. And I was like, wow, I'm used to in him, through him, through him, in him, and with him. Right but not on him. So then I started picturing what does on him look like? And I pictured Jesus with all of my sin on him, all the world's sin on him, and you know, kind of breaks your heart and it feels, you know, but then almost instantly I was given the image of all the love on him because that's the truth. That's beautiful. I know it just really is. And I think this comes from my retreat, you know, mm -hmm. seriously, it's a, it's just a place that I'm growing into where I realize, you know, um, just like when a friend says, Oh, I didn't know y'all were going through that. You know, I wish you had told me why well, I didn't want to burden you. I didn't want to put that on you. My problems on you is kind of how, you know, we tend to think. And so sometimes I do that with the Lord too. And yeah. I'm, you know, but it's already on him. It's he all on knows. him. Yeah, the sin's already on him. He's he's taken that from a long time ago. All of our troubles, all of our burdens, they're already on him. And so is the redemption of that. And so is the love. And if we can just sit in that truth, then it doesn't make the times necessarily easier. But then we know that it's on him. And so he's got this. That's it. And so I offer that to you, Mandy. Um and your family, and your precious baby who's waiting a bed. Lord, we just ask you to shower your healing over them, especially the little ones that are suffering with this. It's one thing for the adults to be sick like this, but the little ones, it just, Lord, just shine on them. Just grant them healing. And the mamas who are sitting there watching them, the parents who are enduring this, Lord, just give them what they need. Help them know and trust in your peace. Your peace is already there. We don't have to ask you for it. It's in it. Your love is in it. We just trust you. We thank you for being here with us. So stay safe, everybody. Yes. Have a blessed we week. We hope you have a very blessed week. And we hope Fred's going to make it back. He was praying with us. Everybody stay safe. Amen. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.